Memphis, Florida State. You recall back in 93, they followed that victory with a date with BC, and they're dying the green for the first time in 17 years, and it ain't easy being green. Ryan Grant stops. Then Grant has some trouble, and he puts the ball on the ground, and there's Josh Ott. Josh Ott was around all day long on the ensuing Eagles possession. Derek Knight gets loose, Mark. Nice job of turning the quarter, heading the ball downfield. He gets tackled at the two. He'd later punch it in. Boston College up six to nothing. This isn't Notre Dame. This is not Notre Dame football. Again, Holiday having trouble. Another ball winds up on the ground. Holiday ends up taking a shot. He'd finish up the series. Now Holiday trying to scramble, and he finds a wide open. Omar Jenkins, touchdown. But it was ruled incomplete. Boy, many officials have had a tough year. This is this looks like a catch trick. Clearly a touchdown. And obviously, this is a crucial play in the game. It's early. It was a nice pass, scrambled. It was, should have been a touchdown Notre Dame. Well, the Irish botched up a field goal attempt. They had seven fumbles on the day. Holiday ends up having a seat for a while. Pat no, Dillingham. No, no, no. Oh. Josh Ott again, picking off the ill-advised pass. And Josh said later he was just thinking, don't trip. Don't trip. <laughs> he did not trip. Two-point conversion, and the Eagles were up 14-0, fourth quarter. Holiday scrambling, and what a play by Holiday, and he finds Maurice Stovall. Just great heart, Mark. Outstanding patience, looking for your wide receiver, keeping the play alive. Maurice Stovall there for the touchdown catch. Outstanding between Holiday and Stovall. Now, Willingham opted to kick the BC is able to move the ball a little bit, and by the time Notre Dame got it back, they had just time enough for this prayer, and the Holiday pass goes incomplete. And in the green jerseys for the first time in 17 years at Notre Dame, number six in the nation and unbeaten, they go down 14 to seven. Derek Knight, 129 yards on the ground. Notre Dame, this is the key. They turned it over five times. They fumbled seven times, lost three of them. Afterward, Tyrone talked about the uh, choice and sartorial splendor. The sea of green is important because it talks about an attitude. It talks about the Notre Dame family football team coming together and being as one. And so I thought it was a great time, as we speak of the jerseys, to have our team be a part of that oneness, that uh, single-mindedness, that pursuit of victory. I mentioned the troubles in the pursuit of victory. you got to take care of the football. Notre Dame has made a living forcing others to give it up. See what they've done in the first eight games. Did not do much today. Got one turnover, promptly fumbled it back just three plays later. So Notre Dame down. Surely that would be the end of the yeah, road. That's it, right? Maybe not. Virginia Tech against Pittsburgh at home. Pittsburgh perhaps not getting the respect they deserve. And they were thinking payback. Pittsburgh clobbered the Hokies 38 to 7 last year. It was Virginia Tech's worst loss in Big East play. And as their calling card, they block a punt. Nathaniel Adibi blocks it. Hokies set up a Kevin Jones touchdown. It's 7-0. That's their fifth block kick of the year. And once again, this time this was an unforced error in special teams for Pittsburgh. Andy Lee gamely tried to get the first down, but the Hokies were set up, and Kevin Jones, who would come up get me, injured his hamstring on this play, and Suggs had to carry the load after that. Fellow untouchable, Lee Suggs, and of course, he is more than willing, ready, eager, and able to carry the load. Suggs going in for his 22nd consecutive start, in which he scored a touchdown. It's 14-0. It's now 14-7. Suggs logs on. He is part of the gone network. 59 yards. Vatek in control until Rod Rutherford started looking for his freshman wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald. In my opinion, the best freshman wide receiver in the country right here, Larry Fitzgerald. Look at the body language coming down with the catch, but he's not done. I think you might as well go to him again. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you see Rod Rutherford, three-step drop, get wow. rid of it. Oh, great pass, good. great catch by the freshman. This is worth another peek. You just won't see a better catch than that. We are tied at 21. The Panthers, they just started beating up the Hokies up front. Brandon Myrie. Brandon Myrie goes 53 yards and hit a 28-21 lead, and they would hang on to win by that score, and there was plenty of rejoicing. Sit out here, we play it right down the middle. Mark didn't even sink when that was going on. Pittsburgh, a 28-21 winner, so we have two unbeatens down already. And this game was not about turnovers. Pittsburgh flat out dominated Virginia Tech in a lot of areas of the football game. And here is the architect of that victory. I tell you, our players played great. Our defense played tremendous. 
Brian, uh, Brandon Myrie did a great job running north and south. Our line obviously did an outstanding job. It was a great victory for our football team, great victory for our program. So a couple of unbeatens down, Georgia with a chance to strengthen its position in the cocktail party against Florida. Of course, just beating Florida is enough for the dogs. They've won just one time in the last 12 tries. Rex Grossman fires, Matt Jackson a header, and Tim Jennings going the other way. Rex Grossman makes a saving tackle right there to keep the dogs from scoring on that play, but on the ensuing drive. David Green, J.T. Wall, that's the play they beat Tennessee on last year on that waning drive, hitting the fullback over the middle. Seven nothing dogs on top, but Grossman was razor sharp. Finds the tight end, Aaron Walker. Gators missed the PAT, 7-6 game. Now D.J. Shockley gets his chance, and uh-oh. This is why I don't like alternating quarterback. The ball is picked off by Gus Scott, takes it, pick six into the end zone for four. Two-point conversion was no good. Dogs ended up with a 13-12 lead at the break, but two Big plays, second half that really hurt the dogs. Billy Bennett hits the upright on the field goal. This was after a stupid, stupid personal foul penalty, moved them back 15 yards. It was just egregious, and it cost them three points. And then Bennett hooked one. He'd been great all season long. Bennett's won games for them, but he missed a couple there. Fourth quarter, 13-12. Look at the catch. Ben Fruit Grossman firing in there. Two-point conversion. Rex ran it in. It's 20-13. Now, this is the last chance for Georgia. David Green is going to get sacked. Dogs did not convert a single third down all night long. They were 0 for 13. You're not going to win many big games like that. And David Green and the Dogs go down for the first time this season and for the 12th time in 13 tries against Florida. Obviously, Rex Grossman, huge day. I felt great for him. But defensively, I thought Florida. John Thompson's defense just befuddled Georgia all day. Kelvin Kite really stepped up going over 100 yards receiving. So now we have three of the unbeaten. Down. We're down to five across the country. North Carolina State at home against Georgia Tech. Fourth quarter, T.A. McClendon in a 10-9 game, and it looked as if the Wolfpack had yep, assumed yep. control of this thing. But A.J. Suggs, John Paul Fauci, and Tech now trailing by two. Got to go for two. Chan Gailey calls the right play. Suggs, Jonathan Smith, we are tied at 17. Same score, Tech now with the ball. Great, great improvisational skills by Gordon Plink Scalemark. Outstanding job of changing direction, then getting to the corner and punching it into the end zone. Terrific one by Gordon Plink Scale. Needed to pick up the slack since Tony Hollings was lost early in the season. Plink Scale had 94 yards on the ground and Phillip Rivers and the Wolfpack, they go down. They were trying to become the first NC State team to win 10 games. They'll still have a chance, but they beat the Scarlet Knights 180 to six over the last three meetings. First drive of the game, Ryan Hart, true freshman, you know, spoke to Florida State people. He said earlier in the week he hated Miami, then tried to back off that, but didn't have to back off after he hit Aaron Martin. Parents Pittman would set it up for a touchdown. Then in a 10-8 game, Sean Seabrook scoops up the block, Freddie Capshaw punt, and Coker's team is down 17-8 to Rutgers. And they would get more just before the half. Nate Jones, a pick six, 100-yard variety, nothing but green grass and opportunity out in front of Jones, except, oh, a flag. Where was the holding? That's why you're Rutgers. Look at Shiano. You know, when you're Where's Rutgers, the holding? When you are Rutgers, you tend to have calls like that go against you. Now, keep an eye on this right here. It appeared to be, and maybe what they called was that little thing on Kelvin Winslow. That nothing little thing. The play. Bad call. Well, in, in fairness, Miami had a lot of penalties in the first half. It's not as if anybody was cheating or anything, but Willis McGahee would cash it in for a touchdown. Oh, oh Vince Wilford just swallows up. Running back, Wilfort would be pleased. 17-14 game. Now, trick a race. Throw it, throw it, throw it. Ball. Cardi, it's Sean, ball. Cardi, no, it's a Sean, Sean. Ball. You go up by six points at that You're point. Rutgers, Mark. So you think, Chiano's saying throw it. You like You got to throw the ball, but you love the ball. You go no, for the no. win. Change of momentum. That play changed the momentum of the football game for the Rutgers. You got no chance against Miami. Well, Dorsey and Andre Johnson for the touchdown, and then the Canes exploded after that. They ran away with it. 42-17 the final, though. You know, I'm going to use that sportscaster phrase. Go ahead. Score not indicative of how close this game really was <laughs> for 45 minutes. So Miami, after having a scare, they rolled certainly 
Boston, Colorado provided a much bigger challenge Another to number upset? two, Oklahoma. Gary Barnett, what oh, was a nasty day in Norman. Football Look at the rain. Way. Football way. Way. Nation's leading rusher, Chris Brown, puts it on the ground. Sooners recover. Colorado had a trouble hanging on to the football all day long. Quentin Griffin did not. Ripping off a big game, set up a field goal. Oklahoma would build a 10-3 lead late in the second quarter, 13-3. Nate Hibble, Nate Hibble's maligned in some quarters, but he yep. continues to make big plays, finds Mark Clayton. I mean, look, he wouldn't have a great day, but time after time when they needed him, he did that right there. Perfect completion to Mark Clayton. You're going to see it here again. Now watch him roll left, set up, and throw the ball. This is one of the best catches I've seen all year. Remember Charles Rod, but is he in? Look at the replay. Look at this catch by Mark Clayton. You're not going to see it. Okay, whatever. Oh, he's the replay in. proved he got he's it in. down. Just like Charles Rogers. You know, with the Fitzgerald catch and the Clayton catch, too, the better catches you'll see. I don't know if anything matches the Rogers catch. Those two catches were fantastic. fantastic. State both at 4 0 in the conference, and maybe Jason Gesser is re emerging as a big time Heisman candidate. Finding Jerome Riley. This guy's been over 200 yards receiving the last two games combined. A favorite target. Wazoo up quickly, 7 to nothing. Few possessions later, the Florida State transfer. DeVar Darling, the big gain, and the Cougars were on the move. And here's Gesser again, Mark, this time finding Troy Bianaman. Nice job. Under pressure, just locking the ball to the end zone. Great catch by Bianaman. You know, Wazoo has some personnel issues. Jason David got in a fight with teammate Ira Davis. He's a Pac 10's interception leader because nobody wants to throw it, Marcus Trufant, but they did. And he picks off Andrew Walter, takes it back to the Sun Devil 39, and on the next play, sudden change. Go for the jugular. There you go, Jason Gesser back to pass. Look what he does. There's Riley again. What a phenomenal catch into the end zone over the defender. Touchdown, Washington State. And though we didn't have Coog weather, we had some Coog performance. Uh, oh, what a tremendous heck, grab by Riley. Nice coverage despite that fact. Cougars get it done. They build a 27-6 lead. Look at the numbers for Jason Gesser. You get a hug. 250 yards on the day. Three I love touchdowns. You. Threw a couple of <laughs> interceptions. And the 44-22 win for Mike Price's team. Despite all of those issues, Wazoo comes through. Wisconsin and Iowa, Fred Russell in civvies. Brad Banks is in full football gear, and he was outstanding. Finding Maurice Brown. Iowa a little bit sluggish, just missing on some plays, thanks to some good Wisconsin defense. 10-3 at the half, but the second half belongs to Brad Banks. Well, you're going to see him here, and if you got a great tight end, why don't you go to him? Look, in the middle of the field, Dallas Clark, very difficult catch over the defender. Dallas Clark! And this time, Maurice Brown again. You use Dallas Clark in the middle. You tout him for the Mackey Award every week. I love and Dallas Clark. Oh, there's Dallas, Dallas Clark. Clark. You like Dallas Clark? There's Dallas Clark. You know what? When he catches three or more balls, which he did in this game, Iowa 13-0. I throw, 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 throw it to Dallas Clark. I throw to him every money, time. Why not? 20 to 3. Iowa continues to roll. They are 6 and 0 in Big Ten play. But a reminder: they don't play Ohio State. If Ohio State wins out, they would be the Rose Bowl participant, unless, of course, they're playing for the national championship, which is also quite possible at this point. The other unbeaten team, Bowling Green, taking on Kent State. Ten-game winning streak coming in. The mascots were scrapping. Joe Alls getting a handoff. Joe Alls. Alls that. 14-7, Bowling Green. Bowling Green now at 17-7, and Josh Harris, their fine quarterback, finding Charles Sharon for the touchdown, 18 yards. Bowling Green up 24-7, and Harris once again dumping it off. P.J. Pope going in. Convoy down the sideline. Harris 18-24, 201 yards, couple of touchdowns. All's a career high, 179 yards rushing. Bowling Green under Urban Meyer sitting there at 8-0. And, and in my opinion, Urban Meyer is the hottest coaching candidate to move up to Division I to a major program. I'm not saying Bowling Green. It's coming calling in the Huskers. Certainly acquitted themselves well, but would it be good enough? Keep alive that streak. Chris Sims finding the legend. Roy Williams and the Longhorns take a 13-10 lead. Next possession, same score, third and goal. Sims had a huge day. 29-47, a career high 400.
119 yards against the Black Shirts. It was a 10-point lead, but now it's a 27-24 game, 43 seconds, Texas having to punt, and DeWan Bros trying to save the Huskers. Well, he's bailed out the Huskers all season long. You see the nice moves, get down the sideline, 44-yard return for Nebraska. Now third and 10 from the 16. So much decides, okay, we're going to throw it in the end zone one time rather than line up for the field goal. Oh, and the man coach. they call ESPN3, Nathan Vasher with the pick to save the Longhorns. And the nation's longest home field winning streak at 26 straight is over 27 to 24. Texas wins it. We're going to talk about that end of the game scenario the new quarterback, Adrian McPherson, but quarterbacks don't play defense. And nobody stopped Wake Forest, Chris Barkley. The Demon Deacons up 14-0. Then James McPherson looking for Jason Anderson. Demon Deeks looking for the upset. They've never beaten the Seminoles as a member of the ACC, which, of course, a lot of ACC teams can say that. McPherson, then the Anquan Bolin. Back to a 21-17 game just before the half. And then Nick Maddox up the middle. Florida State takes its first lead of the game, 24-21. And the Seminoles go on the road to Winston-Salem, and they win it by a count of 34-21. Florida State was not impressive in the first half, but McPherson played very well in the second half. And I think for his first start, Trev, he settled down in the second half and played very well for Florida State. Yes, he did. He he and Akron, boy, the cheerleaders should have gone horse Ooh. cheering for this guy. Byron Leftwich. Injures his left shin on this play against the Zips, and Leftwich had to leave the game. They, in fact, took him to the hospital for a while, with Leftwich hobbling out of the game and then checking him out. They ended up getting him back in the game late, and Leftwich firing a dart down the middle to Josh Davis, who had eight catches, and look at this. His lineman physically carrying him. Well, Leftwich has carried the team all season long. They might as well carry him down to the next play. But it was not enough. Akron taking advantage of nine Marshall fumbles. They lost five of them, a couple of picks. Left which went over 300 again, but the Zips get just their second. State Maurice Claret in uniform, not playing. That left shoulder still smarting. Craig Prenzel finding Michael Jenkins. This for 49 yards. Down to the Minnesota Five. And the very next play, the man who replaced Claret, his name is Liddell Ross. Running in from there. Ross ran for two scores, 7-3 Buckeyes. It was 10-3 in the third. Now check this out. The left side of the Buckeye line spot shadowed. Why? Because we felt like it. They seal the outside for Ross. The play designed to go to the outside. And then what does Ross do? He decides to cut it back inside. So he gets to just walk in for the score. 89 yards on 20 carries for Ross. Ohio State, 10-0 for the first time since 96. The Buckeyes haven't allowed a touchdown in 10 quarters. 34-3, the final. So the top six teams in the BCS started Saturday unbeaten. That you know. Now just Oklahoma, Miami, and Ohio State. Number 13, Michigan just wailing on Michigan State in the big house. B.J. Askew, two-yard touchdown. This after the Wolverines were down 3 nothing. John Navarre sneaks it in. Then Navarre goes upstairs to Ronald Bellamy. It's 21-3. And Benny Joe for a 12-yard touchdown catch. And then Navarre to Bellamy again, 47 yards. This time, Navarre threw for three scores and ran for one. And Askew's second touchdown. He ran for a career-high 149, 42-3. Tim Bracken from five yards out. Wolverines, 49 unanswered points after they trail 3-0. They give the Spartans their worst loss since 1947. It's getting ugly in East Lansing. We stay in the Big Ten. Number 21, Penn State hosting Illinois. First quarter, look at Larry Johnson making gaps. Guys miss 84 yards and he had another 84 yard touchdown run called back on a holding penalty in the fourth quarter Johnson still broke his own school record rushing for 279 Penn State wins 18-7 thank Oregon Ducks that was their first mistake Jason Fife five through three TD passes and he ran for another here's one to George Reister 14-0 Oregon. That was a great one-handed catch, by the way. 35-7 was score in the second. Punt return. Watch Michael Craven. He's the one with the arrow. Gets leveled by Keith Lewis. 38-7 Oregon in the third. That's freshman QB for Stanford, Kyle Matter. Taken down by Igor Olshansky. Olshansky, second sack of the day. A bloody matter leaving the game a long afternoon. But not for all kind of fans getting ready for those Tennessee volunteers. 
As only South Carolina fans can. Gerald Riggs, uh-oh, coughing up the ball. South Carolina recovers it. Must have been those fans. Same drive, second and goal. Fez Robinson punching it in for the score. Gamecocks down 12-10 after the extra point. Casey Clawson goes to work. Oh, good play calling. The bootleg and the dive in for the score. Phil Fulmer gets his 100th victory at Tennessee. Loretta, Lido Roth, Larry I'm with Johnson. Mark. I'll take Larry Johnson right now. Marshall and Akron, Charlie Fry, despite Lethbridge's courageous performance, Akron pulls the upset in the rubber bowl. 34 to 20 is the final.